Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ann. How are you? Yeah, good, good. I've got a really great topic for the show today. <laughs> what? I said I've got a really great topic for the show today. I can't hear you. I said I've got a really great Will topic. Will someone please keep that damn chicken quiet? I've got a really great topic for today's show. Let's talk about mash. Oh, my God, Ed. You killed it. You killed it. The chicken? No, the topic. That's great. I can't wait to talk about it. Awesome. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitchell. <laughs> and this is Mitchell A.S. Halleck. And welcome to another episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. Before we begin today, a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed and has been watching the show. Uh, our last episode out is uh, all you need to know about Knight Rider. So if you're a fan of the Hoff and Kit, check that out. But uh, also a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We're um, over the well over the 300 subscribers now. We're just heading towards that magic 500 where I get to drink some 1999 Pepsi uh, soda. How about that? 500. That's pretty good. What have you got? Is it a uh, thousand? Did I get to drink this? Yep. Why not? Mountain tastes Dew. Like Rune, tastes like Rune Hako. So. <laughs> this is from the Phantom Menace collection. Mountain Dew from 1999. Oh. Anyway, so thank you very much. But hey, Mitch, how do uh, people uh, subscribe or get notified? Well, it's funny you should ask, Ed, because it's simply by hitting that button that appears just before us right now. Subscribe. And if you click on the bell, which is the notification, you'll get notified when there's a brand new adventure of me and Ed as we trek back into time and talk about TV, movies, toys and more. And we're heading back this time to the Korean War back to not the 1950s, but 1972, as we talk about MASH. Yes, Ed. Actually, we're going back a little bit before 72. We're going to go back to the late 60s when mm -hmm. there was a book written by Dr. Richard Hooker. Is mm -hmm. his Well, that's his noom de plume. That's his real name. But anyway, it was called MASH, the story of three doctors, yep. and it was a hit. It was a recollection about this surgeon who was back in the Korean War, and he was assigned to a mobile army surgical hospital aka mash and it talked about the things that went on behind the scenes because as we all know ed those were civilian doctors those were not military men those were basically you know the guy down the street who yeah, suddenly local gp or what have you or a surgeon or surgeon yeah next thing you know they're in olive drab and sitting there a couple miles away from the actual battle zones and it, that's that's a, that's a different way of life you know mm. you can't turn these guys into soldiers and Sure enough, that's what happened, Ed. Yep. Yeah. And, and then uh, I was going to say it was such a big hit. They went ahead and make a movie. In fact, some of the people might know Otto Preminger, a.k.a. Mr. Freeze from the Batman show, was the producer. And he hired director Robert Altman mm -hmm. to make a movie based on the book MASH, which most people thought was a satire of the Vietnam War, which was still raging on. And in a weird way, it kind of was. But. They got around it by saying it was the Korean War. And they're like, oh, okay, that's different. It's not Vietnam, it's Korea. So people weren't that swift on the uptake back then. That's right. But and that, the, the movie came out in 1970. Donald Sutherland, Elliot Gould, uh, Tom Skerritt. Oh, Robert Duvall, yep. Ali Kellerman, uh, Tom Skerritt. You got uh, Gary Berghoff, one yep. of the only characters who appears in the movie and then the TV show is Radar O'Reilly. Oh, apart from uh, uh, the actor playing General Hammond, he was in a few episodes as well from that, but sort of disappeared. But it was a it was a huge hit and yeah. uh, they were going to try and make a sequel. There was another book, uh, MASH Goes to Maine, I think. Is There's the... actually a bunch of those books. Yeah. And there was uh, MASH Goes to Moscow, MASH Goes to Maine, MASH Goes to you name it. And they're they're not really like the characters that were in the TV show. In fact, that irritated the author very much so because his interpretation of Hawkeye is not what Alan Alda did with the character. And he was very outspoken for years. He'd come out and say, that's not my Hawkeye Pierce. My Hawkeye Pierce is a, 
a hard drinker, womanizer, and, you know, a, a staunch conservative, too. There's actually a weird line in one of the MASH sequels where it says Hawkeye would go down to college war protests and beat up anti-war protesters. protesters. Mm. That's not something I could see Alan Alda not ever doing on the show. Like, yeah, let me go beat up some commies, you know? Mm. Not gonna well, that, and, you know, the film, um, like, for me, I mean, I didn't realize there was a film... Uh, you know, when I was watching the TV series MASH, I thought the MASH was a, an original thing. So it's quite interesting. I remember going back going, oh, there's a movie? Okay. Yeah. It's, you know, this was a long time ago. So I thought, okay, I'll go watch it. And it's quite different to the, to the MASH oh, TV yeah. series oh, yeah. we know and love. The characters, yeah. um, it's a lot more, um, I mean, for you guys, it would be, what, an R-rated movie? It's quite... It was, um, it was, yeah. Yeah, um, no, you it, know, was, it was one of those things. It was very controversial. It was a big hit. Let's just mm. say that. But it was one of those things where it was uh, irreverent, you know, because of the way even the filming style, the Robert Altman filming style, he has kind of like what we do here on the show, overlapping dialogue sometimes. Yes. But he would it, that's all scripted. A lot of folks think that was all improv on the set and everybody was making it up as they go. But just no, like us, actually, it, this is all scripted. It's all done perfectly. No, but it was one of those things where all the actors knew what they were going to say. Mm -hmm. And he actually had the microphone go through the crowd. So you would pick up like, you know, eavesdropping, like real conversations. Like these guys are talking about an operation. These guys are talking about a nurse. These guys are talking about a football game. Mm -hmm. And as it just went through the crowd, your ears would just pick up different sounds. So you were kind of immersed into that environment. And then they were also very, very realistic when it came to the surgery. Yes. They were like cutting, amputating people and there was blood squirting everywhere. And that's it wasn't the, the real pretty Hollywood, you know, hospital movies type of thing. It was it was showing how horrific, you know, actual war would be and, you know, people getting shot. So, again, not the things. But like I said, it was a huge hit. And they didn't do the movie sequel, but they no. did immediately. No, 20th Century Fox said, hey, you know what? We've got this show. Why don't you know this movie? Why don't we try making a TV show? which it's been done before. I mean, you had Mikhail's Navy was a movie and then a TV show. And then uh, I was kind of no time for sergeants was another like army type of thing. And then they made yeah, a TV well, you had show Batman, that, you know, they did a movie version of yeah, Batman. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the times they weren't that successful. I got to say on the whole, it was always the ghost of Mrs. Muir. There's the movie and then there's the TV show, which is yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah. But the mass show was different. And like I said, they offered all the people that were in the movie a chance to be on TV. And it was still back when Hollywood had that little aversion from movie actors being TV actors, because that was kind of a symbol or a sign that your career was going You're in the slumming toilet. Slumming it a little bit. Yeah, you weren't going to work again. So they all said no. I mean, even Tom Skerritt, whose character doesn't even appear in the show, he was yep, Duke, Duke Forrest. Yep. They asked him, and he said, no, I don't want to do a TV show. And then they just wrote his character out of the uh, the show. But he went on to be an alien and cheers and Tom Skerritt's had a huge career. I don't even think people realize he was even in MASH. There, um, yeah, but yeah, it was is seen a, a bit of as a downturn to for your career to go on to TV. But the person who did take up the mantle was Gary Berghoff, who was, I suppose, you know, the pivotal to say, the series. Connecticut's own from Bristol, Connecticut. Yeah. Right up the street from me here. Yeah. Anyway, yes, he did. He was also known for. I better, I better, I better for... grab my uh, right uh, while I'm my uh, Teddy. My uh, yeah. Teddy. Oh, but he was also known because he played Charlie Brown on Broadway in the play "You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown," and that's how he got noticed, Dad. That's how he got his audition. You know what? I could see him playing that, actually. Being Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah, that's how they first saw him. And so they saw him on stage and they, they went backstage and they met with him. And then he, he tells a story like a couple years later, he got a call from Otto Preminger's brother. And he went out to Hollywood and he didn't even know what it was for. But it was because of that. They saw him in the, uh, the play and they brought, him, they brought him in. I'm trying to think. Sally Kellerman, who a lot of Star Trek fans will remember, from the first match, uh, first match, first Star Trek, because she's in where no man has gone before, which I believe is like the first one they normally run, even though I think it was the third, you know, with Gary Mitchell. Yes. AKA Gary Lockwood, when he gets the powers, that's Sally Kellerman. She yep. was hot lips Houlihan in the movie. And then Robert Duvall talk about a big movie career. He went on to a zillion movies and he played major Frank Burns in the movie. So yep, that's right. everybody in that movie, when you go to watch, it, it's kind of cool because you'll see them later on. 
in, in you know, Donald Sutherland, my goodness, he was in zillion movies and Ellie Gould is still popping up there. I mean, they were really big at the time in the early seventies. I remember seeing another movie directed by Irving Kirshner who went on to do the empire strikes back. Uh, it was called spies. S -P -Y -S. Now, yes, yes. And which was, which was, in fact, they did spies, the logo mm -hmm. for spies. They used the asterisks like yep. they did on mash to try and tie it in. And they, you said, you know, Elliot Gould and Donald Sutherland back since the first time since mash and that yes. film flopped. <laughs> it did. Yeah, I did. The funny thing is I had two older sisters and I remember they were all into Ellie Gould and Donald Sutherland. So I knew about mash from those guys. Cause like I said, at the time, Elliot Gould was a huge star. Mm -hmm. He was even married to Barbara Streisand at one point. I mean, that, you know, that was a pretty big deal back then. So he, I'm trying to think he went on to do like Sam Spade. He did some detective movies yes. and stuff. His career kind of went weird, but he was a big deal back then. But I remember the movie mash being on the CBS network. I think it was a Friday night. It was almost at the end of summer, early September here. It was a big deal a premiere. It's like tonight CBS movies presents mash. And it was on from like eight to 11. It was like a three hour thing, yes. but they edited the heck out of it I because bet. it was a rated R movie. The language was there. There was sex in it. There was the blood and the gore. I just remember my sisters watching it. And then they said, coming soon, a TV show based on the hit show. And so when you watch the first episode, it's very similar to the movie. They try mm -hmm. to, you know, try to have the same look and the, the feel to it. Like you mentioned, uh, they bring General Hammond in, who's played by G. Wood. Yes. He's a bald actor. He's the same guy. So they're trying to get that continuity. And Radar is totally different. You want to talk about characters yep. that change over the years. In the beginning, he's kind of like a... A streetwise, uh, I don't know how do you want to put it, like a like a, like a punk kind of kid. He's mm -hmm. drinking booze, he's smoking cigars, he's chasing girls. He's not the radar that that evolves, you know, yeah. that becomes this like wholesome all American teddy bear loving, you know, goody two shoes that happens years later. So it's really weird. And uh, I'm trying to think what other character changes were. Hawkeye and Trapper were kind of interchangeable when the show first started. Henry Blake played by McLean Stevenson. He was just in the background. Actually, McLean Stevenson auditioned to play Hawkeye Pierce, mm. which is very odd because he's a lot older and you yes. just can't picture that. You're like, really? He was going to be him. But well, Wayne, said, Wayne Rogers also uh, auditioned for Hawkeye Pierce and then real. I thought that he didn't like his um, sarcastic or, you know, cynical yeah. look, look at the world. So he thought that Trapper John would be a, a better fit for him. So Wayne I mean, Rogers, can, another. Yeah, well, we'll say, talk, let's talk about the cast. Obviously, yeah. um, Hawkeye, Benjamin Hawkeye Pierce from um, Franklin. Franklin, Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye yes. Pierce from yes. um, somewhere I always wanted to visit Crab Apple Cove. It's not real. There's no, know, there's a main, there's a main, but there's no Crab Apple Cove. It sounds like such a wonderful, you know, wholesome, all American, you know, classic, classic town. Isn't that somewhere near Connecticut? Come on. <laughs> Well, it's funny you should say that, Ed, because Maine is north of Connecticut here. Yeah. And uh, okay. no, Maine is a lot of trees and few people, but it's got that old New England. -y. And for a guy that was from New England, he had a weird New York, Long Island <laughs> accent. You know, Alan Alda. He talked yeah. a lot like Stan Lee, uh, which is weird. No, but the thing of it is, Alan Alda's character, originally, if you watch the show, they kept saying he was from Vermont, which is another state, which is still in New England, but it's mm -hmm. not Maine. It's nearby. And then we had, uh, and, and like I said, McC Alan Alda was a stage actor. He was in some movies. You know, he had a but lot of- But he wasn't of, a uh, big, uh, he wasn't a well-known no, performer no. at that stage. I saw him in a TV movie called Isn't It Shocking, which was weird. It was like he was a detective in a town and people were getting electrocuted. And it was one of those things you'd see on the local TV. But he was always a good actor. And his dad, Robert Alda, was a big vaudevillian actor. He was mm -hmm. one of the song and dance mans that would travel the country and, you know, put on a show as an, like an entertainer. Cause my mom and my grandmother knew Robert Aldo. They go, Oh, Robert Aldo, the actor. And if you yeah. go look in some movies, he'd be in there. And like, Wayne Rogers is really funny. You can look on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He was in a lot of Westerns cause he was around for a long time. There was the Purina dog food Western hour and they had a, a, a commercial where they were trying to get people to watch the show. And they go, here's the star of the show, Wayne Rogers. And he's playing Colorado Jack or something like yeah. that. And he shows up and he's got this, this cowboy sound to him. And he's got the cowboy outfit and the hat on. And it's got to be like 1962. And he was the star of it. And mm -hmm. he's like, 
Hey y'all, this is Wayne Rogers. I want you to watch my new show where I'm going to be on every week and there's going to be dogs on the show because it's sponsored by the Purina dog people and they bring the dog on, you know, and you can see his face. You're like, what? But he's also in cool hand Luke, ah. which is the Paul Newman movie, yep. the prison movie. If you watch that, you'll see Wayne Rogers in the background. And uh, it's kind of cool. Cause you go, Hey, I know that guy. That's going to be Trapper John MD over yep. there too. So when he took the character of Trapper John, Wayne Rogers did, which was Ellie Gould's character. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, if you look at the movie, those guys did not look like somebody from 1950 because they look very 70s or 60s. They had a thick mustache, the long sideburns. And Donald Sutherland had the hat and the glasses on for the whole movie. They didn't look like they were like Richie Cunningham's dad or something like that. No, I I think they played with context a little bit, uh, you know, uh, at the time. But uh, we also had... Sorry, I was just going to say um, Larry Linville, who was uh, Frank Burns. Frank Burns, uh, you yes. know, with uh, thin lips, uh, ferret face, I suppose. You ferret could face, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now the funny thing about him, he's another guy that you see on a lot of shows because I saw him on The Night Stalker. Yes, he with was. Darren McGavin. He's the beginning of the movie after they killed the, uh, the, the showgirl in Vegas. They're doing an autopsy, and it's one of the interesting shots. The camera's coming up from the body like a cadaver cam. And looking over, you see the uh, the medical examiners looking in there, and they can't find any yep. blood. And it's Larry Linville. And years later, I met him here in Connecticut, and I told him, I said, you know, I remember you. And he knew the character's name. He's like, oh, yeah, I played Dr. Blah, blah, blah. And he just went on with talking about the, uh, the Night Stalker movie, which was like, okay. And That's then he actually cool. showed up on the TV show, too, yep. the Night Stalker. But he was a good one. And then you had Loretta Swit, mm-hmm. who was playing Hot Lips Houlihan, Major Margaret Houlihan. Uh, she was in one of those staples on TV. She was actually in another show at the time. I can't recall that, but she was a regular at another, uh, I think it was a CBS detective show or a hospital show. And then let's see. Oh, there was a different Father Mokehi. Yes, there was. Yeah, it's not Rene Aubergenois, who was in the movie yep. that we'll all know as Odo from mm-hmm. Star Trek Deep Space Nine and also Benson. But they got a guy named George Morgan, who's still alive. And he lives not up the street from me. He lives over in Martha's Vineyard. He's a, okay. a local actor. But uh, George Morgan is the original Father Mokay. He had the red hair. You actually saw him on every episode for 11 years. As Hawkeye runs up to the helicopter pad when the wounded are coming in, yep. there's a guy running behind him with a whitish hat. That's actor George Morgan as Father Mokay. They just left him in the background. So technically, he was on the show. I'm sure well, he was happy to get those uh, residual checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then rounding out the cast was Henry Blake, played by McLean Stevenson, who was also another guy that was on a lot of TV shows. He was known mostly for his role on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Mm-hmm. He played a tennis pro. He showed up a couple times. Yep. But his claim to fame is his relative was Adlai Stevenson, who was a politician who actually ran for president. Mm. And he was actually the okay. vice president, too. Huh. So there you go. I didn't That's know that. everything you need to know about the first Oh, cast of mash don't forget jamie farr well he doesn't come on as a regular until years later but he showed up and he thought he originally had a one Mm. episode deal as corporal Klinger, and it was such a good you know a big hit they brought him back and the funnier thing is if you go watch episodes of hogan's heroes you will see jamie farr and william christopher who plays father mulcahy he together on an episode of hogan's heroes plus they're in a movie together. Huh. Yeah, they played hippies of all things. It's like one of those things. It's like, yeah, put a wig on them. And I can't remember the movie, but they're in another movie together in a scene with like a protest sign and stuff. And Jamie Farr's career goes all the way back because he actually served in the army during the Korean War, as mm-hmm. did Alan Alda. He was also in the service. They, uh, Jamie Farr worked with Danny Thomas and uh, Red Buttons. I don't yeah. know if you know Red Buttons. Yeah, Red Skelton. Red Skelton, I'm sorry, it was Red Skelton. He was a comedian, and he toured into the USO shows for the troops, and Jamie Farr worked with him. So he was actually in Korea for quite some time uh, entertaining the troops and stuff. But no, well, it, was, it was a good show, but it didn't do well. No, and- no, the first the first season, um, it's surprise, I'm surprised it actually didn't get axed after the first season because it didn't rate well or anything like that. But, you know, they had faith in it. You had some fantastic um, creatives. Um, you had... Uh, 
I think it was Burt Metcalf and Larry Gelbart. Well, Gene, um, Gene Reynolds. Larry. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm Bert, thinking Bert of comes um, in later on. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, who did uh, he did uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. It was a new kind of show in that it wasn't a comedy, really. No, it was, uh, no. you know, I think you'd call it now a dramedy, I think is the is the term. But, um, you know, the uh, studio wanted to have a laugh track. The uh, yeah. they resisted having a, a laugh track. So they said, OK, well, look, we'll only have a laugh track um, as long as we're not in the operating theater. So right. there's no laugh right. tracks in the operating theater. Um, it was a uh, really, um, it was a, it's a thought provoking, you know, series. I always call mash like a bit of a warm blanket because yeah. it's all, it's still on today showing in Australia, you turn it on and you know what you do. You, it just feels like you got this lovely warm blanket. You know, you get in for a, you know, great performances, great writing, mm -hmm. thought provoking, mm -hmm. thought provoking stories. Um, and uh, it was lucky. I'm glad that it survived to season two where the ratings started to, uh, to pick up, but that's when we started to um, start to get a sense that maybe there's going to be some changes later on because uh, well, yeah. we did lose yeah. uh, we did lose uh, Trapper John. In, well, I think yeah, it was what season happened? Three. Yeah, I was going to say what happened is it was on Sunday nights against the wonderful world of Disney. Even as a kid, I watched Walt Disney. I didn't mm. watch Mash because it was like you know, come on, man, it's Disney. So the uh, William Paley, who was the president of CBS, his wife really liked the show. And, you know, when the wife of the owner of the network likes your show, you figure out something to do. So yeah. she's like, don't cancel it because it really was going to get canceled. Mm. So they said, let's move it. So they moved it to Saturday night and they put it in a lineup that you could be the worst show in the world. And you would have got somebody to watch it. It was on after all in the family. Yeah. Then there was the Mary Tyler Moore show. Then it was MASH. Then it was the Bob Newhart show. Then it was the Carol Burnett show. Uh -huh. So on Saturday night, nobody left their TV. You literally sat there from eight o'clock to 11 o'clock for three yep. hours and just had all-star comedy. And that's when MASH really took off. In fact, if you watch the season opener of the second season, they introduce all the actors again. It says, oh, assigned to the show is Alan Aldis, Hawkeye, Wayne Rogers, Trapper, mm -hmm. because they knew they were trying to capture a whole new audience that might not have watched them. Yep. There was no DVRs or VCRs not. or downloads and all that. You either watched it or you didn't. So yep. they had to re-educate people. So the show went you know through the roof and then it became this huge hit season three huge hit it starts having the rumblings when mclean stevenson doesn't want to be you know one of three guys because the show started to evolve and it became obvious that alan alda was becoming the star of the show even though it was an ensemble yep yeah they started writing more for alda mm -hmm. and wayne rogers was kind of getting tired of being the second banana in the background he loved the guy i mean alda and wayne rogers were close friends offset for years up until his death they were the best of buddies, but you also he just don't didn't want to play guy. second fiddle. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And then what happened is once McLean Stevenson said, I'm out of here, Wayne Rogers never signed his contract because there was a clause in it, a morality clause, yep. because the studios would have things like, well, we saw you were at a protest and we saw you were dating this woman and she's like, you know, we don't like her and you're out. So because of that, where it was very broad and it wasn't specific, he said, I'm out of here. He just left. Yep. And then they were literally about to start the show. They already had Harry Morgan cast as Colonel Potter. Yep. And, and he, he had, uh, he had already appeared as a different character. Yeah. General Steele. He was yep. on season three. It's fun to watch because you'll see McLean Stevenson and Harry yep. Morgan in the same show. And you're like, Hey, that's Colonel Potter and Colonel Blake together. But, uh, it, yeah, it was almost like an audition. They just yep. saw how good because Harry Morgan had a career that went all the way back to like the forties. He's mm -hmm. in Westerns. He's on TV. He's on uh dragnet. He's on yep. a show called like I married Joan or something. He's been around forever. He's got a very distinctive look and a sound. And you know, when you go to see like, look, there's Harry Morgan, he's in yep. movies with Jimmy Stewart and such, yep. but the early scripts were all written for Trapper John. And then when he just up and left, they were like, Oh, what are we going to do? And then they had to go cast the new guy, which was going to be BJ Honeycutt. Yep. And the funny thing is, is did you know the other actors that were in the final running for BJ Honeycutt? No. You ever see the movie Babe? The actor James Cromwell? Yeah, the uh, the Aussie film. Yeah, with the pig. Yeah, the big farmer and guy. And he's, he's um, also, uh, he's in uh, Star in Trek Star as... Um, Zephyrin Cochran. Yes, the that's right. The creator of the warp drive. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And First Contact. He's actually up for BJ Honeycutt. 
They don't use him. In fact, if you watch the show, there's an episode where he comes on as a friend of BJ's and he like falsified documents and BJ gets arrested and they think he's not really who he says he is. That was kind of like, oh, you know, let's throw this guy a bone. We almost gave him yeah. a job. So that and then the other actor was a guy named Alan Fudge, who you might remember from a show called The Man from Atlantis. Yeah. Or the episode of MASH where there's a soldier who's wounded and he thinks he's Jesus Christ. Yeah, I do remember. Yes. That actor, Alan Fudge, was also in the running to play B.J. Honeycutt. But Mike Farrell, who was a TV actor who was on a lot of shows, I think he even appeared on The Rookies or a couple of things. He was another staple of uh, early episodic TV. He gets the part. Yep. So he comes on the show. So, yeah, when the fourth, yeah, the fourth season starts, you, you, you just, you know, brought two major new characters. And mm. that's not really something that happens on tv with that that children. usually happens in the the final season of a show where something goes wrong and then the ratings uh, decline but just before we get on to to that i thought we should talk a little bit about abyssinia henry which oh, is yeah. um a, a landmark episode um not only in mash but in in television history where you know we find out that you know um, Henry Blake is he gets gets to go home and you sort of think oh he's it's fantastic and then of course we've got that final scene where Radar comes in and uh, gives the news that uh, he didn't make it yeah yeah and in fact no one knew about that except for Alan Alda the writers gave that last page of the script to Alda so he knew it was coming the others didn't so the legend goes that was a, a, the first take and then they just filmed everyone's reaction to it. And it was like, whoa, what, what happened? But then I've heard another story where something went wrong with the editing or the sound and they had to have Gary Berghoff come in and do it again. But it was only two takes of that. Yeah. But it's a very hard hitting scene because TV, people didn't die on TV. I no. mean, it was like, you know, somebody left the show. They just left the show. You know, they got rid of Darren on Bewitched. They just got another guy to come in and play Darren yep. and they just didn't talk about it. You know, it was like, oh, OK, that just happens. So. I it think um, I, I, it was quite a shock. I know there was lots of complaints. People go, how dare you? This is a comedy show. You should just do that. And there was um, talk that in some, um, once it got aired later on, they um, they just removed that final scene. They did. Some, um, of, the, some of the syndication never showed that, which is really yeah. bizarre because it's a major story element. And it's like, oh, you know, we're not going to show that. It's like, oh, Luke Skywalker, he didn't blow up the Death Star. We're not going to show you that part of the movie. Yeah. It's like, how could you not show the end of the sh what happened to the character but they did it for years that did not run you know so yeah very weird isn't it so i know i know it's 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 you crazy. know it's but funny I'll, it was it was a groundbreaking share? show so remember share she's still around share yeah, the entertainer she yeah. had a tv show yeah and it opened and i remember watching this as a kid i know what because tonight's say. guest is mclean stevenson and there he is in the full henry blake outfit with the fishing hat and the yeah. the vest and he's in a life wrap He's like, hey, I'm OK. It's OK. I, look, I'm all right. I didn't yeah. I didn't I didn't die because so many people were like you said, were writing letters to the network, like a thousand people wrote in like, how could you kill that guy? You know, but they so, wanted to show how war is such a futile and random. Not everybody goes home. Yeah, that's yeah, what the whole so, point of the show um, was, you know. So we got uh, the new season, BJ Honeycutt, who's quite different to Trapper John. Yeah, um, he's a family yeah. man. He's very wholesome. I love um uh, BJ's character. I think it was a really good foil for um, Alan Alda. Um, mm. I, I, I just like Mike. Mike Farrell's got a really good. I don't know if you have ever had a chance to meet Mike Farrell, but he no, just, I didn't. Like, I was thinking about that last night of all the different characters. He seems like a really nice, like like his character that he's playing, a really decent kind of guy. Also, was a member of the service. He was in the Marines, believe it or not. He doesn't look like a Marine, but he served yeah. in the Marines. Uh, yeah, he's just one, he's just one of those nice guys and he's very big in political activism. Yep. I mean, he's always traveled the world and a lot of different causes and helping people that are downtrodden and being, you know, victimized by their government and yep. you know, political exiles and stuff. So, yeah, Mike Farrell's done a lot way beyond just his acting. He's very in, you know, and still is. And, I still Oh yeah, he is. is. I mean, he's yep. in his later years, but no, he's still flying around the world and you'll see him like on the news trying to help some you know crime that's going on so mm -hmm. yeah he was one of those kings his character see i didn't really i gotta be honest with you i'm more of a f early seasons of mash i'm more of like my favorite episodes are the ones with uh henry blake and trapper john yep because they're so out there 
it, it really becomes a different show. I mean, we got to yeah. be honest with you. The, the fourth and fifth season are probably the most well-written of the, all 11 years. Those are like consistently, there's not a bad show. If you just watch those two seasons and those are yeah. all the BJ Honeycutt and the yeah. uh, Colonel Potter ones, there's everyone's hit out of the park. They're just like so good character stories and interesting uh, topics and things that happen to the crew and the cast. But the first three years, maybe it's because it's so wacky. I mean, mm-hmm. it's almost like an F troop. Yeah. Gilligan's Island, Hogan's here. It's almost too out there. I mean, there's some scenes that happen in early mash that you're like, they would never do that stuff. Yeah. Years later, you know? Well, I think uh, also what once um, Alan Alder sort of took a bit more creative control um, you know, there's at one point, um, he's the only actor to ever get an acting award, writing mm-hmm. and directing award. I think maybe a Golden Globe, um, you know, so an Emmy award. Of, uh, yeah. yeah. So it sort of shifted, you know, tone a little bit and everything yeah. like that. Um, but uh, maybe it's just maybe I just remember those later, later episodes because I was a bit older at the time. And I remember um, seeing those. Um, yeah. Then around but, but, season season five, I was we, say had, they all, you, sorry, we, yep. we forgot they, they also had a Jamie Farr as part of the cast at that point. Yes, he becomes yeah. a regular. I mean, he was always on there, and Father Mulcahy will come on as William Christopher will come on as a regular as well later yes. on. But then, yeah, Jamie Farr rounded it out, and then they uh, they had Margaret Houlihan get engaged. Yes, so they too. broke up the whole Frank Burns. You know, well, that's when he decided when Larry Linville decided to leave. So they thought they'd um, they'd uh, spin that with uh, Penop Scott, where um, he was this you know big athletic. Who he only just uh, the actor only just passed away. I well, think. actually, there's two. Yeah, he, you're right. There were actually two actors that played yeah. Cap, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Donald Penop Scott yeah. as uh, her fiance, who becomes her husband. Uh, the actor who just passed away, he was also the son in Smoking the Bandit. Yes. He was Jackie Gleason's son, yes. uh, Junior. Yeah, I think his name is Beeson Carroll. If I'm not mistaken, that might be him. And then there was another actor that played uh, Donald Penobscot in another episode. So it is kind of odd. But yeah, the, the, the more famous of the two just passed away like a week or two ago. Yeah. Uh, and, but the thing about Larry Linville's character, Larry Linville, we didn't talk about him much other than he was on some other shows like The Night Stalker. I go back now and watch him. He is brilliant. He oh, is yeah. so funny. Because it's hard to play the villain, the, you know, yeah. the jerk every week, but he just has facial gestures. I mean, you yeah. you you hate Frank Burns because he's you know bigoted, he's a yep. jerk, he's a selfish bastard, he's always trying to do stuff. He's a horrible doctor, mm. but the way Larry Linville plays him, there's like a I don't know, there's almost an element of sympathy for the guy. You're like, yeah. yeah, he's a loser and a jerk, but he can't almost help it. You know, it's like he was never it's... that cool. You know, yes. He's kind of like a Ralph Mouth, though Ralph Mouth is not bad, but Ralph no. Mouth was always that, like that jerk that you were like, really, Ralph Mouth? Come on. Yeah. So. But so when he leaves the show, he didn't want a big send off. They, they asked him, they said, do you want us to do like a farewell episode where he mm-hmm. does stuff? And he says, no, I don't want to come back. So after five seasons, his contract's up. He doesn't come there. So they got rid of him off screen. Yep. In the opening of season six, he goes crazy after Margaret gets married. Yeah he just goes off to Tokyo and he just starts attacking different women thinking that they're major Houlihan and you know, they just write him off. He gets transferred back to the States and he becomes a full Colonel. They promote him and they put him in charge of a VA hospital, Yeah, which is weird because in the movie mash, that's kind of what happens with Robert Duvall's character. He has mm-hmm. a mental breakdown when Hawkeye yep. picks on him about sleeping around with uh, major Houlihan and he just attacks him and beats him up. And then they ship him out after he has a breakdown. So kind of similar but larry yeah. linville unfortunately he doesn't go off into a big after mash career he's no he um he stuff. appears i mean you see him on uh uh the love boat you see him yeah. on i think murder she wrote you know he does a lot of um guest guest yeah. um stuff but he he died you know he was only 60 when he passed away he was yeah it, 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 it's really ironic because i was just watching the episode the other day it's called dear ma it's they're always good about those letter episodes yes which is something because those are really easy for the writers to put out because they only have to write little segments. Yep. And they just string them together. Like, Oh, the other day Ed was trying to like, yep. you know, f- put flea powder on a koala. Why Mitch was, uh, had his hand stuck in a pickle jar. And all you do is write those little scenes, yep. but you string it along as a letter. There was letters to Hawkeye's dad more than once. There was yep. letters to radar's mom, even Klinger wrote to his uncle Abdul in yep. one episode. 
But uh, we never got one from Frank Burns. He never wrote home to his wife. No. But the thing of it is, uh, in the letter episodes, Frank Burns is there and Radar and Hawkeye are going around doing foot inspections to see if anyone's got foot fungus or something. That's right. And he, and he goes to, he goes to uh, give Frank a physical. And Frank goes, I've got a mole under my sternum. I think it's a tumor and this and that. And it's ironic and very mm. dark. But years later, the actor... Larry Linville would get a cancerous tumor down yeah. in his sternum and then it spread. And that's what I was like, Ooh, that's a very evil foreshadowing yeah. yes. to reality there too. We, we forgot to mention when McLean Stevenson left, he was another guy that was promised a lot of things. He was going to be Johnny Carson's replacement on the tonight show. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Then the NBC gave him a show called the McLean Stevenson show, yes. which was a disaster. And then he became like a butt of joke in Hollywood because it's like you were on the number one or one of the top 10 shows yep. and you left on your own volition. No one told you to leave yep. because you wanted to be the star. And then he never got that star power again. He was on another show called Hello, Larry, which was a spinoff of Different Strokes, mm -hmm. which was a bomb in the another NBC thing. And he, McLean Stevenson just slowly fades out yep. into the career. And then unfortunately, he passes away in his early 60s and recovering from uh heart surgery mm. he died in the uh the the, the hospital yeah. um i think he was only 64 and another weird thing he dies the same day as the actor who played henry blake in the movie mash that's weird that is weird look it up they they, they yeah. died the same time it's like what are the chances of yeah two actors that play the same character dying in the same day so we got um we got uh new colonel potter we've got bj replacing uh Frank Burns, we've got Charles Emerson uh, Winchester, Winchester the third, the third yeah. um, who I've <laughs> my only my only mesh action figure that looks just like David Ogden Stars. Look at that. Now, what did you think that, of that character? Because honestly, for years he was my least favorite. Well, I again, you know what I liked that they didn't fall into the trap of just getting a replacement, uh, the same type of character. You know, BJ was different. Colonel Potter was different, and um, and uh, Charles Emerson, Emerson. I'll just say Charles was uh, was yeah. quite different as well. And I thought that was that was good. And I think with all the characters, again, you had a really good character arc. You know, they mm. didn't stay the. They really didn't stay the same. They, um, you know, they they grew. Houlihan changed. Um, of course, Klinger, you know, changed. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. All these characters had really, you know, well-rounded characters, and I think I quite liked that. And and you know, Charles was annoying, that pompous, but he did have moments of, you know, the, when you think about the Chinese, uh, the the um, Korean, you know, the band, you know, mm -hmm. there was moments, you know, I, I quite his love of his sister, you know, yeah, in through those letters yep. and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, um, yeah, I really, I, I did enjoy his character. And the funny thing is also all the actors who replaced um, those characters or, you know, came in, they ended up playing, being on the show longer than those original characters. The people that replaced, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to remember that the MASH ran for 11 years. The Korean mm -hmm. war ran for three years and one month years, and a few yeah. days. So yeah, you go and explain the timeline of MASH. I think they had nine Christmas episodes, a couple different new year's Eve episodes. And you're like, well, yep. how long was Trapper there? Like a week? And was Henry Blake there for like a month? And didn't because... they do an, They did an episode where uh, it's it a, took whole place in a whole year. year. Yeah, yeah. Colonel Potter played Father Time. Yeah. And you're like, wait a second. What year? And it was like saying goodbye to 1981 or 1951. Hello, yep. 1952. And you're like, wait a second. So what? They also, they also did, they did a, um, a real time episode which, yep, you know, yep, predated yep. obviously 24 by many years, you know, where they showed yeah, yeah, it real yeah, time, yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, innovation. Actually, I'll say um, quickly, one of my favorite episode is the dreams episode oh, where okay. basically all the lead characters fall asleep and then you get an insight into their dreams. And I remember being absolutely freaked out by, I, that was what I was, I was thinking maybe our other opening could have been me with um, a fake arm that I was going to pull off like um alan alder's character yeah, where um yeah, he couldn't yeah. uh he couldn't do the surgery or there was Hullahan with all the blood on the wedding, on gown. wedding dress yeah no, and uh, then there Major was winchester was the magician bj was dancing with his wife i'm sure sharon would have come downstairs for that yeah <laughs> so um and then uh, colonel potter there's... was riding the horse i was going to bring in 
you know, my dog and try to ride. Yeah, that's Harley. right. You could have, you could have ridden Harley. That's right. I'm, I'm you know surprised what, though, there's not the p- picture of painting of your thumb in the background there somewhere. There's, you, there, there's a lot of weird stuff that happens on that show that you don't think of either when you're young or you're, it doesn't make sense. They have scenes where like Radar, who's ESP, they don't really get into it much, but Radar O'Reilly is not only extrasensory repossession or rep- repossession. He stakes, he takes back things. Uh, he's a repo man. Not only can he tell the future, he's also a time traveler because Radar manages to read comic books that weren't printed for 20 years. And in one scene, the comic book changed covers as he was sleeping. They go to wake him up. He's got an Avengers cover and then they cut back and he's got a different Avengers comic. So somehow he flopped it out. And then they talk about movies <laughs> that aren't even made yet, like Godzilla movies that don't come out till 1954. But yet they, they're talking about them in there. There's no spell. Well, given they did, they ran for 11 years, a few anachronisms, I think, you know, cut well, them some also slack. weird stuff, like because Henry Blake's wife's name is Mildred. And then it comes Lorraine. And then Colonel Potter's wife's name is Mildred. And then Major Houlihan's dad is dead. And then he's alive. And then he's dead. And then he's alive and he shows up on the show. Hawkeye has a sister and a mother at one point. They're become nothing because all he has is his dad. Don't forget then, his brother Chuck upstairs. Oh, well, yeah, they all went on the same thing with Chuck Cunningham. And then BJ's daughter, Aaron. Aaron, is just born when he gets shipped out. But then she's like two years old. And I, I don't know. You don't even want to get into the MASH timeline because your head will explode because it's all kind of inconsistencies about what's happening, when and where. But you gotta let it go. It's you gotta just, let it go. Um, Mash also had some fantastic recurring characters who were, you know, again background. No, I, I remember Nurse Kelly. You had uh, um, Igor, Igor, or Igor, the the chef. Yes. You had um, Rizzo. Uh, was Rizzo. Um, Rizzo. Who I yep. remember from Police Academy, Colonel Flag. This Edward Winter, who was the who CIA guy, only appeared in a few episodes. Six but episodes, made... but people, yeah, people think he was on a lot more, but he's yeah. only on six shows because his character was so funny you're like oh colonel flag's gonna be on that was one of my favorite whenever colonel flag would show up and then the other one that we love is dr sydney friedman who has a different name when he first shows up it's not sydney friedman it's uh sydney something and then they change his name um can't remember but the first time he appears he has a different name and then the same thing colonel flag the first time he's on he's not called colonel flag he has a different name and then you're probably retconned it in your head like he was probably undercover yes that's right that's right yeah but uh, then, Sydney uh, Freeman um, was um, a fantastic character. I mean, what yeah. a um, uh, he if you if you had to see a shrink, I'd want yeah. to see I'd want to see him. He was such a well. He was one of the people they wanted to be part of the show as a regular, but he turned the role down. He hmm. does appear every season. There's not yep. one of the eleven years. There's not a Sydney Friedman episode, yep. but and he's obviously thing, pivotal in the uh, last episode oh especially the last episode yeah absolutely and i'm trying to think who else there was rosie from rosie's bar they had a yes. couple different actresses or actresses play her uh then there's a lot of guest stars if we want to talk about mash's guest stars there was jack sue who people might remember from barney miller who played uh nick yamana but he was on in the earlier episodes there's patrick swayze yes. george went shelly long another yep. cheers regular ed, on there. ed begley jr William Cat, the greatest American hero, is on the Christmas episode when Hawkeye comes down dressed as Santa Claus. Oh, Ronnie uh, Howard. Yes. R- Richie Cunningham. Maybe he ran off because he plays a guy who's only 15 years old yeah. who went to join the service to impress his girlfriend. What's his name with the big pompadour? Uh, Ford Fairlane. Uh, um, Andrew Dice, Dice Clay. Clay. Sun yeah. Teko, who played the Korean doctor who would later oh, a appear lot of on. Times. He was, uh, you know, you often see the... It's, it's like a lot of shows. If you watch... Um, like I've been watching with Mission Impossible and things like that, you know, you see Robert Loggia, whatever, turn up four yeah, times, yeah, different yeah. characters and things like that. Yeah. Mako is another actor yes. who's on at least four or five times, the famous actor Mako. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I was going to say Mrs. Tom Hanks is on there too. Rita Wilson. Yep. She's on there. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. It's also fun to watch some of the mistakes that happen besides the continuity things where Godzilla movies are there and yep. Avengers comic books. But sometimes in the background, you'll see things. There's one episode where there's a Ford minivan driving in the distance. And that was the van that would take people from the lot to the ranch when they filmed on location out there at the Fox ranch. So that van in the background that somehow traveled through time from the seventies. It was radars. It was radar. It was, that was the truck. He was like, Dr. Who he was corporal who Uh, no one knew. 
Uh, and then there's Hawkeyes wearing uh, those blue tennis shoes that Paul Michael Glazer wore. Yes. Uh, Starsky and Hutch. They were really popular. The blue with the white stripes, the suede yep. ones. He comes walking through the set with one of those one day. There's some background folks, like maybe some crew members now and then you'll be watching it and there'll be a guy in like khakis and a, a blue yep. sweater with a headset. You're like, what's that guy doing there? So very odd that mash that, that, so that's bound people. to happen you know especially with yeah. uh now you know tv shows that uh you know you did you'd watch it once and that was pretty much it you go off oh, that was it yeah you know? yeah um we can't we can't not talk about a few things obviously we've got um radar as um teddy bear which made it to the smithsonian uh do you know um uh do you know big bird's name of his teddy his radar yep that's it the funny thing is that this teddy is, bear this is not dis- this is mine from a kid as being a kid from a kid so i can't yeah sure it is sure it is it is it is teddy you sleep teddy. with that that's for another episode no the line know, is when they told what, radar bring don't, bring, no. bring alan arbison and i'll talk all about my problems no so. what happens is uh frank burns wakes up radar and he has a teddy bear he goes don't tell me he sleeps with you and radar goes i'm trying to do better sir so <laughs> it's a good line but the thing about it is a good line that teddy bear disappears. Radar leaves the teddy bear when he leaves the show. When Gary Berghoff leaves the show, we forgot yep. to mention that. He leaves. He wanted to leave in season seven, but they held it over to season eight. Mm-hmm. No offense to Gary Berghoff. Radar is one of my favorite characters of all time, particularly his performance, like like I said, during the show. Even when he was like that streetwise punk kid, yep. it was always fun to watch Gary Berghoff because he just has great facial expression, like, ooh, wee, you know, he's, he's yes. always reacting well. But his last two episodes, I have to say, he was just so either wanted to get out of that yep. show or something was going on. There was one season or two seasons where Radar only appears like every other episode, like only half of them. Yep. There's like some contractual stuff going on. But he just looks so angry on that last episode when he finally gets there because his Uncle Ed dies and he has to go home to, t- with his, to take care of the farm with his mother out in Ottumwa, Iowa. I don't know what it is. It's his choice to play the character. I mean, I'm not going to knock the guy. I'm not an actor, but whenever I saw that, I just like, wow. Well, at the, I think, at, yeah, at one point he's going, I don't want to wear the hat anymore. Um, yeah. But they're going, yeah. yeah, but you're, you know, you're balding. So you, you're you not going to look at the young that we, yeah, you know, he had a perm. And his hair was curly. It just was like, what's going on? You there, know, I'm you know? um, the one thing that, I mean, a lot of people probably know, but you might not know is um, he had um problem with his, his hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if you you sort of uh, every time you see Radar, he was a yeah. little self conscious about it. So he'd always be carrying something, or you know, yeah, and a clipboard, or they would cover it, it up. It was very the funny. Thing is, not- I I was gonna say I found out about that because not knowing the show, but there used to be here in the states there would be like after school specials. Yes, and it was for kids and such. And Gary Berghoff appears on a show where it's a bunch of puppets and they're talking about people that have like uh, deformity or yep. something like that. So they don't look like everybody else and, you know, just accept people the way they yeah, are and there's nothing to be afraid of. So he shows all these little kids in this, this particular show, his hand oh. and how, it, how his fingers were. And he says, Oh, look, and I, you know, I have a career and I'm an actor and this and that, but it, it didn't hold me back. So I knew about that just by watching this after school special when I was like 10 or so, yep. which was really cool because it's one of those things, you know, most people would just, you know, they didn't want to let, you know, cause Hollywood's very physical and superficial and it's yep. always the good looking guy and the good looking woman. They don't want to have any imperfections and stuff. They're like the, the model, of what the, the human aspect, well, the human know, figure should us, be. But, yeah. yeah, exactly. But the thing is, no, that was really brave of him to do. And I always mm-hmm. admire Gary Berghoff for coming out and doing that for kids, like letting people know, like, you don't go making fun of folks. So no, that was one thing. But yeah, when he left the show, I got to admit, the show really changed. I mean, well, that's when the, Klingo the, sort of took over. Klinger right? stopped wearing dresses yep. and uh, he started and he fell in love with Soon Lee, who's played yep. by, is it Axis Roseland Cho? Who yes, becomes th- on Deep Space yes. Nine? Yes, who's yeah. um um Miles O'Brien's wife? Well, wife. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I I don't know. I mean, nobody wants to play the same part. They they decided to end the show. Mash was not a ratings disaster. It kept it was number one in the ratings every week. It was on. It was like Mash, 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 Mash. Well, Harry Morgan said he could play Colonel Potter forever. 
Well, there's we'll talk about that too. But the thing of it is, I mean, some of the actors they were there eleven years. Mm. Like at the, at the end of the show, it's only Alan Alda and Loretta Swit are the only two actors from the original episode all the way to the end. But they just wanted to go out. Alan Alda was doing movies, and um, you know, Loretta Swit was doing you know TV and Broadway. Everybody had other things to go on. The only ones who didn't really have another gig lined up were Jamie Farr, Harry Morgan, William Christopher, because they went on to do after mash yeah uh, do you want to are we talking spin-off yeah series, I was gonna say, all right, well, let's we'll wrap up the season so anyway yeah it goes on they do this big season finale which is a two and a half hour movie where they actually incorporated a real life event because the set out on the location at the ranch burned down there was mm-hmm. this wildfires out in los angeles and the mash set where the tents are just burned i mean it's there and they w- wrote that into the show the final episode and they got an extra half hour Yep. And that was the biggest show in TV history to this day. It's celebrating its 38th anniversary on February 28th. Mm-hmm. 110 million people, which was like half the country at that time, watched it. And no one left their set. So much so when it finally ended in New York, they actually had an alert because everybody ran to the bathroom to flush the toilet to cry or to go to the bathroom because they've been holding it in because they didn't want to see or they wanted to see how it ended, that the water levels dropped so much. In I've the, heard that. I reckon, I think that's yeah. an urban myth. I've got it. No, it's not an urban myth. myth. No, that's actually documented. They were like, because the, the, the water comes down from up north down the aqueducts yeah. and stuff. And it was like, whoo, the water pressure just dropped. But everybody watched the last episode of MASH. It was one of those things, even though that's not the one they filmed. They actually filmed an episode that showed before that where they bury a time capsule. Yeah, that was, that was the last so, which one. just shows yeah. what good actors they are because you would right. swear that that is the last time they ever saw each other. Right. Which is set. yeah, it's weird. No, no, that wasn't it at all. When they all say goodbye to each other, that was months earlier. They yeah. filmed that and they had to go back and do that. And it's quite a, it's um farewell, uh, goodbye, farewell. Goodbye and amen. Yeah. That's the um, title. Of it. It's um, it's quite a, it's quite an emotional um episode you uh it's got find the out. most writers yeah it's got yes. the most writers of any episode i think it's got like eight or nine writers on that one and alan alda wrote it he was part of that too he wrote 31 episodes i don't know if we mentioned that over the 250 something episodes of mash he did 30 uh he wrote 30 episodes mm-hmm. but that is you want to talk about a, a if you watch the first episode of mash the pilot and then the couple of the early episodes you would never think of the character trajectory that's going to happen to everybody. I mean, you know, after 11 years, you know, it's nice that Margaret Houlihan's not hot lips anymore. They call her Margaret. They got rid of all that sexual innuendo and all that. She becomes a full fledged empowered character, which is great because it's still the seventies and the eighties and women's Mm -hmm. lib is just, you know, topical. It's not like, uh, you know, a, a given. And then Hawkeye, which was always weird to me too, is those guys would drink a lot. Yes. And then they never knew when the helicopters were going to come in with wounded or the trucks would show up, but yet they'd always be ready to go operate. And yep. I was like, wouldn't you be, you'd have to be shot up or on morphine to not worry that your doctor's like, yes, I hope we can make this one work. Yep. You know? So it's, that was always an odd thing that they were always drinking a lot on that show, you know? Well, they but, don't, uh, I mean, one thing, actually, we should talk about the swamp, um, you know, yeah. the, uh, the tent, which, um, they had, um, I think they had an exhibition after, uh, after yeah, the, the last Smithsonian. episode at the Smithsonian yeah. uh, where they recreated that. But, you know, the famous still um, that they have in there. There you go. There is. Um, yeah. you, you look like you're coming out of the swamp with those effects. I am. It, it smells terrible in there. We just found out where they buried Trapper John's underwear. So <laughs> that's, a, that's where Spear Chucker was, you know. That oh, yeah. We forgot. Didn't... They wrote him off the show, too. Yes. Oliver Wendell Jones. Yes. Uh, anyways. Jones. Um, the last episode. So you find out, um, you know, you it, it, you get closure. You certainly find out what happened to, you know, some of the characters. You, um, yeah. Uh, I suppose the the biggest uh, shock was, the, and we alluded to it in our very well acted intro to the Did show. We? Anyway, I think. You want to tell me what you and BJ were talking about? Same thing he always talks about. What's that? Fingers, smiles, teeth, booties. Was there anything about that you found upsetting? No, I'll tell you what I find upsetting is being in here. I want you to get me out of here. I don't care how you do it. You can put me on a plane, on a train, on a bus, on a slow boat to China. I'll go out on a mouse-drawn chariot. I don't care what. A bus, huh? Again with the bus? Why don't you subscribe to Arizona Highways and leave me alone? It's more fun with you.
Keep that damn chicken quiet. Then what happened? Then they went back toward the front of the bus. And what happened next? something wrong with it it stopped making noise it just <laughs> just stopped she, she killed it she killed it she killed the chicken oh my god oh my god Hawkeye and the, the trauma that he experiences on the bus with the chicken, which you find out is actually a child, um, yeah. which causes him to um, have a, a mental breakdown. Um, you, uh, you get the uh, father Mulcahy who ends up um, uh, losing deaf. his yeah, hearing. A, a shell. Yeah, yep. yeah, the irony hearing, yeah. of Jamie Farr Klinger, who's spent all this time yeah. wanting to get yeah. out of Korea and he ends up staying. Um, mm -hmm. BJ gets to go, you know, he, Home, he rides he off with back. the motorbike yeah. off yeah. into the Which sunset. looks like to this day, I always think that uh, Mike Farrell almost got killed driving down that hill. If you see him go down there with that, I go, does he know how to ride that thing or what? Because his legs are all over the you place. You get radar like, wow. coming in. I'm sorry. Uh, there were no yeah. survivors. <laughs> exactly. No, and then Winchester leaves on a garbage truck for all yeah. his pomp and circumstances there, yeah. you know? So there was that. And then uh, Colonel Potter on his horse gets promoted. What's that? Uh, you got uh, Colonel Potter on his uh, rides off on his right, horse. Yeah. He, yeah, he goes and donates Sophie to a local farmer, so they'll take care the, of her. The, and the then Winchester factory, had so, the band. Yeah. yeah, and then who else is there? And then Rizzo, they, they all even the supporting cast got stuff. Igor becomes a pig farmer. Roy, who's one of the orderlies you see in the background, is uh, a character because if you watch all the years of Mash, you'll see certain people like you said, Nurse Kelly's in the background. Yep. Igor's the cook in the background, and then there's Roy. Uh, Roy Goldman is the actor's name. He's there. He's a big bodybuilder. He was good friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger in real life. He's just there. And in the episode, he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do because he really didn't know what he was going to do. That was like not acting. That was him. Yeah. His last performances, he plays Hitler in To Be or Not To Be with Mel Brooks because he was uh. good friends with Mel Brooks. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was around for years. In fact, Gene Reynolds, we forgot to mention it, one yeah. of the producers of MASH and directed so many episodes. He was an actor in Hollywood. In fact, he goes all the way back to The Little Rascals. Uh. which was Spanky and Alfalfa and Buckwheat and all those guys. If you look, there's a young Gene Reynolds as one of the uh, the little rascal kids. So yeah, it's interesting. Was, that, Larry Gelbart, was, yeah. Jack, was Jackie Cooper on the... Jackie uh, Cooper was a little rascal as well. Because yeah. he directed a couple of episodes yeah. of uh, MASH. I know he uh, MASH, and Alan because he was Alder. friends with Gene. Yeah, yeah I don't think Gene they Reynolds. got along very well, he and uh, uh, Alan Alder, but... Um, no, 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 not Jackie Cooper, who we know as Perry White from the Superman. That's how movies. I know him, yeah. Great Caesar's ghost. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, and then there was a lot of, in fact, there's some of the directors on MASH that I talked about a show called F Troop, Ty Aberback. He was a director. And if you look on some of those old shows from the 60s, you'll see his name pop up yep. a couple of times too. And we forgot to mention the song. The only song that's on network TV that got away with it with a title called Suicide is Painless. Yeah. were written by robert altman's son because they didn't have any words to it and he just it's, banged it's it out it, well it's funny there are lyrics to the song and i remember here we go during my theater days in probably 1982 83 we yeah. did a um they did a um a, a little skit and they ended it and we all had to sing suicide is painless and it, it was the worst thing changes. you could possibly sing but actually um i was saying oh I was saying earlier um, that it is also a play. So I've got the play. Oh, this is the that. one act play, but this is based on, uh, this has got um, uh, Duke in it and everything like that. So it's an actual. Oh yeah. Duke Forest. Yeah. Yeah. It's an actual play, um, a cut down version. It's not very, it's not today. You know, you think again, you don't think of the movie, you think of, the TV series, yeah, the so TV this show, isn't exactly. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I think of the movie too. I like the movie. I'll usually watch it once or twice a year. Literally, I've been watching it for years. 
And uh, there's that big football game that they have at the end, which is kind of fun to watch. And the movie's nuts. But I'll tell you what, the difference between the movie and the TV show is I, if I was shot and wounded, I would not want to go to the MASH movie, the movie from uh, the MASH yeah. from the movie. I'd want to go to the MASH from the TV show because yeah. they were mean spirited. I mean, that's a I, like I said, it was a, of its time in the late yeah. 60s, early 70s, that hippie rebellion. They're a bunch of jackasses. I mean, yeah. honestly, Hawkeye and Trapper. And we forgot to mention John Shuck, who a lot of kids might know from the Klingon ambassador. Oh, in the Star yes. Trek movies. He plays the painless pole. Walt Waldowski tries to kill himself. That's where the whole suicide is painless. Yeah. Joanne Flug, who's a big time uh, 70s actress. She's in the movie Mash. She plays Lieutenant Dish, which was a different character on the TV show. There's a lot of people in that one. But Bruno Kirby. Yeah, makes an appearance in the very early episode. He throws the football to Radar. Radar appeared on all the episodes too. That would be the back of his head when the choppers would come in. Yep. That was from the first episode. Once he left, they, they got rid of that. him out. They edited him out. In fact, all those years that they would zoom in on Hawkeye, it's because if they pulled back, Trapper John was on the other Jeep yep. coming down the hill, but they yep. just kind of zoomed in to save some money. And we forgot to mention some of the other supporting cast. Yep. Another guy who died was Sergeant Zale. Yes. Another actor named Kirby. That was Bruno Kirby's dad. Oh. He just passed away at like 90 something years old. Hmm. He was the dad to Bruno Kirby, who kids might know from City, City Slickers, Slickers. Yep. and Godfather too. He was around for years. Great actor Bruno yep. Kirby was, but he was in there too. I forgot to mention Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Is also appears in some of the episodes of early MASH. Cause I was just thinking of uh, the matrix. I'm like, who else is on MASH? A lot of yeah. people. I mentioned Patrick Swayze. He has one of the better roles. Yes. On there. He comes on way before Dirty Dancing. Oh, that. yes. My gosh. That was. But, uh, yeah. What other merchandise? You've got that. Well, I've got I've... a can of mash beer. Yeah. Unlike the other things we try to do on the show, I can't drink it because I, I emptied it out years ago. But there's well, that. I sort of think, okay, mash isn't really a very uh, toyetic, you know, it was hugely popular. And yeah. um, so what did they, you know, they, what, there wasn't a lot of things. I had a lot of um, books. I've, unfortunately, there's some really good um, like episode guides that came out, which I yep. had in my collection, but I've sold The complete that. book of MASH. Yeah. I had that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this yeah. one I just got recently, which is the unofficial Ooh. quiz book. Oh, I didn't know that. You should ask me one, see if I know it. Because as we forgot to mention earlier yep. on the show, and I don't know if we're going to put it up here today, that's actually my initials. Oh, it is. And a little story. A little story is because Mash was so popular in the seventies. I was a good Catholic schoolboy. My initials were Mitchell Anthony Halleck. I had to go get confirmation. I purposely chose a name from a saint that began with an S, Stephen, so I could have my initials be Mitchell Anthony Stephen Halleck or Mash, only because I wanted my initials to be on TV all around the world every single day of the year because I got a big ego. So. That's why sometimes I write down Mitchell A.S. Halleck, or as my wife would say, you forgot the extra S, it's Mitchell A.S.S. Halleck. But anyway, yes, that's my name there too. So look at this. Here's a Hawkeye Pierce that's action cool. figure still on yeah. the card. And then on the back, you have the other characters. This is your Winchester. Yep. And you got Klinger, who's in a dress. Yes. Colonel Potter. And who else? We got Hawkeye, BJ, and I think we have a generic soldier. Yeah, he came with the. Oh, uh, it's Father Mulcahy. He came with the chopper. Yeah, Father, Father Mulcahy. He actually, he looks like William Christopher. I don't well, know. I've got to say the um the I actually only up until recently I thought these were Mego figures because Mego oh. were the ones that brought out um uh you know they had the Love Boat they had Starsky and Hutch they had all these um. But these are actually from TriStar, which is TriStar, a... which I never heard of. Yeah. So, but actually, the no, there's a pretty soldier good. that comes. There's a soldier that comes with the mash jeep. Yeah, which is actually just the Alan Alda character, I think, painted. Oh, uh, repainted. Then hair. there's yeah. the chopper, and then look, um, you could have sent away and got your free patch. Yeah. Look at that. Should have got. So I've got. Um, I remember we've got like the royal. Uh, Royal These were not a big hit, by the way. No. We didn't mention that. No. These were on closeouts. I remember when MASH ended in 82, going to a store called Alexander's, and there was a whole table full of MASH figures for like a dollar. Nobody wanted them. Sorry. Even I don't even aftermarket on eBay. They're not that expensive. These no, oh, yeah, they're still about it's 50, kind of fun, 60 though. bucks each. They're cool. Um, we have uh, a thing called uh, like the Royal Agricultural Show every year. Um, basically, um, how much was that one? 
Sold for $1.96 at Kmart oh. originally. That's pretty good. That's the price. Um, and we used to have show bags. So that's where I got, you know, Star Wars show bags and things like that. They had a mass show bag. And all that I've got left from that is one of these. Um, oh, dog tag. Mash. Uh, there we go. Hang on. I'll try and. Yeah. Yep. So little... actually, you know what's kind of funny as a kid? Oh, it's over there. I was going to say. Um, oh, there was the. Um, there was a mash. A play set, a mash board game. So there's this uh, mash uh, train set where basically it didn't really look. You had a play mat and you had a chopper and things in the train set. I was going to say, I remember some type of model set. It reminded me of like the flying wing model set from Raiders. Yeah, they did have that. And yeah, where some, you, it was yeah. the helipad and the swamp and the, the tents and stuff. Like and they that had model kits as soldiers. well. Um, you could do that. And there was an Atari video game. Mash, really? Yeah. What did you do? Fly in with the chopper? I think you fly the chopper and picked up people for the hospital. And then there was oh. a few levels. Yeah. Oh, I never, I never yeah. saw that. Obviously it wasn't that popular, but you know, the no, board I think game it, it I thought... came out a bit late, you know, like maybe came out 83, 84, maybe. So just, after I was going to say, I, I have thought about getting the board game, but then yeah. I'm like, who's going to play it with me too. But, uh, I would, uh, it was I'll, I'll buy Nash, one too. And we can play like, we can play over and we can live stream it on Twitch. That'll be fantastic. Oh, we'll break the internet. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. But the, I'm trying to see some of the other things that they had too, back in the day, it was on the cover of mad magazine. I know I have one around here somewhere. Crack magazine. Uh, there was a cartoon that ran in the seventies called mush, which was horrible. It was about dogs up in Alaska at a, a, a army base or something yep. yeah i don't know why it only ran for a couple episodes it was on uh uncle croc's block oh with uh, charles <laughs> nelson riley charles, yeah that was the show i and loved Rush. i loved uncle croc's block i thought no one remembers that show no I, that i only remember because mush was on it and it was like they would have like instead of hawkeye they had like you know fa eagle eye and trapper was trupper and frank burns was frank sideburns it was just it was really bad i don't even know if there's any episodes out there there was another show that uh, gene reynolds and larry gelbart did which was called rollout which took place in world war ii which was uh -huh. being filmed on the same sets as the mash set which was about an african-american uh mobile uh motor pool okay i've never heard of that it no one did. It's it looks just like Mash because they had the same costumes, they had the same sets, the same tent for the mess hall, and it ran for about thirteen or eighteen episodes. You can find it on YouTube. Okay, and it's and it's got Garrett Morris and I think I'm gonna say Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah, there were some notable actors at the time that appear on Rollout. Uh oh, Ed Bagley Jr. is on there. He's one of the main guys on there. Of course. Um, and some of the other things we met. Here's my. Here's a real Sylvan Air for you. This is, uh, I used to wear this when I was a kid until I stopped. It was my Let's... dad's dog tag. Oh, wow. From, from the Marine Corps. Whew. I don't know if you can see it, but the problem is with this is my dad was type O. Yeah. And he was uh, in the United States Marine Corps. He was a Catholic. So most of that's cool. And we got the same names, except I threw the S in there. But somebody said, don't wear that. Because if you ever get in an accident, they'll think you're blood type O. Oh, yes. Instead of it said but blood type b positive and that could cause some problems in the hospital your so, your your blood type is b positive that that yeah. sums you up perfectly don't you know yeah and the other b positive thing is your, b, b positive, positive mitch buddy. it's one of the rare blood types buddy yeah i'm i'm sure hey it's you so should the other it. thing we've the other we thing should we talk about the spin-offs I am. I'm trying to get. I know. To it, I just. I was just going to say because we alluded to. You know, what do you do when a show so popular ends? Uh, people still want to milk it for all it's worth, and that's when After Mash came along. After Mash, which lasted mercifully two only two seasons, two seasons, one and done, two and done. Uh, you follow the state size adventures of Colonel Potter, Corporal Klinger, Father Mokehi. I don't know. Even Radar showed up on an episode where he yep. lost the farm and he came out, he was drunk and it wasn't a good idea. And the first year they tried to recreate that whole mash thing. They had a character who was kind of like the Frank Burns Fink yep. character and that didn't work. And then they had this actor, I think it was Armand Asante oh. who came on, who was also in the movie judge dread. And he yep. came on as a, a, a doctor who had lost his leg during the Korean war and yep. he was kind of very bitter. He was a very good actor and that was a decent character, but they wrote him out after the first season 
And then the second season, they went for that wacky, you know, let's let's, you know, buck the system and, you know, be irreverent and stuff. And it was too late by that point because they were up against the A team. Yeah. On a Tuesday night. And, you know, pity the fool that tries to beat Mr. T in the A team. And yeah. they didn't have a, a Lord's Prayer. The no, other I, spinoff. I was just going to say in its defense, you know, it gets yes. a, bad, a bad rap. Um, but it ran two seasons is two not seasons. too shabby for, you know, compared to MASH, obviously 11 season. Yeah, but there was a lot of shows at that point, you know, one less than, you know, if it didn't do well, they'd actually ran longer than the McLean Stevenson show. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. And then no, go ahead. are you talking, are you going to talk about uh, Trapper, Trapper John? John? Yeah. yeah, Trapper John MD, because I was just thinking another character we forgot to mention was Gregory Harrison, yes. who played Dr. Gonzo Gates. He shows up on an episode of MASH and then he'll go on to star on the show, but it's not with Trapper John. It's with actor Pernell Roberts, yes. who was Candy on Bonanza, which ran for years. It was a yes. Western. And that ran from 19, I'm going to say 1978 to 1983. It, it, that was, it, it ran years. for quite a while. And I know there was, um, you know, there was initially a lawsuit saying, oh, you know, you're using characters from MASH the TV show. And yeah. then they were saying, no, we're actually using characters from MASH the, the, the movie. Book. Um, so that was, uh, you know, thrown out. Um, and after, after, um, after MASH, there was mm -hmm. the pilot for Walter. Ooh, Radar's pilot where he becomes, directed by Bill Bixby, no less, of the yes. Hulk fame. And it's about Radar loses the farm. His wife runs off with his friend and he moves to, I'm going to say St. Louis, maybe, Missouri. He goes to the big town or whatever. He's not yeah. in Tumwa, Iowa anymore. And he teams up with his cousin, and they become police officers. Yep. It's pretty bad. It's actually out there on um, uh, YouTube. It only ran once. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a pilot and it apparently it, it rated quite well. It got picked up, but the funny thing is it didn't run across the whole country. It only aired in the Eastern and the central part of the United States. The West coast never saw Walter, which was written just like with the mash stencil letters yes. with the asterisk in the middle of it too, trying to get that radar feel to it. But no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I'm trying to think, you know, what's so funny? I don't know. If, I don't think they ran where you saw them, but for years there was a bunch of computer ads in the late eighties, which they would IBM computers and they reunited the entire cast of mash. And you would see commercials that had actors that were never on screen together. You would see Wayne Rogers with Harry Morgan or Frank Burns, with uh, Winchester and all but these, they, but they weren't characters. playing. They weren't playing their mesh characters. They no, were they were just playing working in an office. In an office. And yeah. I've got to say, I I saw those um a couple of months ago on YouTube, and I'm going, oh come on, are they going to bring? Come on, where's where's Alan Alder? Come on, come on, and there is Alan. Showed up. Yeah, it's um yeah, I, it's interesting. Yeah. I thought it was quite Alan good. Alan Alder would do commercials. I think it was for the early Apple commute, uh, Apple Two or Prodigy or. One of those, and he's so funny because he's showing how you could you could draw yeah. and color things in with a mouse click and all that. Yeah. And it's so primitive by today's standards, but it was just like groundbreaking at the time. It's like Alan yeah. all is there with some little kid and she's teaching them how to uh, yeah. use it. You know what's funny? They do a weird offshoot of Alan Alda as a doctor on the show. I think it was St. Elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And he plays an older doctor who was a Vietnam or a Korean War veteran. And he's starting to lose... I think he's either getting dementia or Alzheimer's or his hands are starting to shake. And it was all about how he could no longer be a surgeon because he had no working motor control. That sounds skills. like an episode of mash where, uh, uh, Colonel Potter, remember he got the shakes and lost his confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Those, and, but yeah. it's Alan, all this character, but off screen, he ends up killing himself. Oh. They don't show it, but you hear him like off screen. I think he shoots himself or oh. something. But when they say he can't be a doctor anymore, they didn't call him Dr. Benjamin Franklin Pierce, but it was kind of like wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah. That's really Hawkeye, but we don't want to say it's Hawkeye. So it's, it's kind of sad, but you can go Google that if you want to see. Well, I, I, I choose to reject that. I I'd like to think that uh, he moved back to crab apple cove and, uh, and had Hung a out successful with practice, you know, and he's still practicing now. You know, so well, he would be like a hundred something years old now, but it he could, could do it. He he was like a Mark Twain of you know television, I think. You know, so maybe he drank from the Holy Grail and lived forever. But the funnier thing is, there was talk of like reunions for years when a lot yeah. of the cast was still alive. They would get together and do those reminiscent shows where they'd have the actors talk about, "Do you remember this? What was your favorite episode?" Like that. 
but I think one of the MASH novels has like a reunion like years later where they get together and it's like you know all these old army buddies but it's one of those things i thought about sometimes if they rebooted it if they did a whole new cast who would you get to play those actors at one point when paul rudd was younger i thought he would have been a decent hawkeye oh yeah you know and um i don't know who could be a good i don't know if you could uh i don't know if it'll work i don't know really yeah Come up with something like new. I think they need what? to come up with, you know, something, something new. We've had so many medical dramas and there's no replacing, you know, those characters from MASH. I I'll suppose- tell you what, during this whole pandemic, I learned a lot of my cleanliness and how to take care of myself from germs from watching MASH. I was like, yeah, I, I know how you wash your hands really good. It's like scrubbing up. I was scrubbing my hands up to my elbows like I was about to do surgery in the OR. Yeah. And then wearing a mask was like nothing because it's like, well, they all wore masks. Unless right. Colonel Blake got killed and they walked in and said the announcement without a mask on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was like common sense. It's like, yeah, there's no pandemic back in the Korean War because they were washing their hands and wearing masks and, That's right. and social distancing all the time. You know, it's still so. educational and uh, and still funny. It's still it's a weird. Hop. It is kind of timeless, though. I, yeah. I, I still watch it. It's on here yeah. in Hulu. And the funnier thing is they run them uncut because i did not realize how much was chopped up in syndication Mm -hmm. until i started watching them on hulu or i have the dvd box set the the shows would go about 30 minutes they'd be like 28 minutes but they'd run in syndication they'd be hacked up to about 24 minutes so they can put more commercials in yes there's whole scenes and characters that i've never seen that i'm watching these episodes like hello what is this it's like a brand new show all over again and they look a lot better too they've cleaned them up Yes. And the colors are brighter and there's all that fuzz is gone. And you're amazed how many actors have bright blue eyes on that show. It's like <laughs> Alan Alda and yeah. Mike Farrell. Everyone's blue eyed on there. So, yeah, I don't know. It's one of the, if it's not the best show of all time, it's, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly in the top, top 10 um, yeah. and hovering close to uh, number one, if not number one, right. Uh, as, uh, as we said, you can find it on, on Hulu. You can get uh, DVD box sets. I don't think they've got a, a Blu-ray release or anything like that. No, you get it on iTunes. You can yeah, buy it's available. Um, it is a great show. Uh, there's a lot of episodes. There are so many. Like, we couldn't cherry. We, you know, we sort of mentioned a few episodes that we like. Um, but there's there's so many classic episodes out there. Uh, yeah. um, Real you know, quick, hopefully, here's my. Oh, yes. I was going to say, real quick, here's my memorabilia. This is when I met Larry Linville. That's cool. Right there. He was he was at a car dealer. Again, this is kind of like sad. He was at a car dealership here in Brantford, Connecticut, right up the road. Yeah. And I drove down the street and it was in the local papers. This was in the 80s. And it says meet, you know, actor Frank Burns from MASH, Larry Linville. And there was a helicopter going up and down in a parking lot. This is before, I guess, FAA rules. Because yeah. like, why is there a chopper in the middle of a neighborhood over a street just landing? And they were given free helicopter rides. And there Larry Linville was just sitting on a Buick. Yeah. And I walked right by him and I did a double take and I got to go back. And there was like maybe two people there. It was, he said he was friends of the car dealership owner. Yeah. He was doing it as a favor, but it was, it was a Saturday. It was in the summer. There was nobody out there, but just him. Yeah. And this was before those conventions became a big deal yes. and everybody can see it. And it was just like, Oh, here's a guy who was on TV once. It wasn't a big deal. And he was one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He did a tour for years. He'd go to college campuses and he would talk about his memories of MASH and working on the show. And he always had great stories about everybody. Mm-hmm. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, even though he played a jerk, yep. was Frank Burns. And again, too bad he died young, but he was yep. a very talented guy. And here's the other one. Met Loretta Swit. She does nice. a lot for a lot of animals. She's a big animal activist. Yep. And the, the, the highlight as a kid was my mom, who would write to everybody, was getting stationary from alan alda this is all the way from july 16th 1980 this is 41 years old yep uh dear mrs halleck i'm sorry it's taking me so long to answer your letter but i've been swamped <laughs> i hope mitch enjoys this a photo and many thanks for taking the time to write sincerely yours alan alda and i've met alan alda and that's his signature buddy it's on his stationery. yeah it's on this nice photo i got here this is to mitch peace Alan Alda, and it matches up. It's one of those things where you're like, well, that's not really his autograph. It like, is. No, that is awesome. It is. It is. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He did a one-man show 10 years ago here in New Haven, right up the street. 
And he, it was like that episode where he gets a concussion and he's with the Korean family and he just stands up there and talks to himself for 40 minutes. Yep. That's the whole show. He was just up there talking about oh. uh, all the stories that are in his books because he's written several books. And he's on a podcast too. We forgot to mention it. It's called like All Clear or Clear Channel or something. In fact, I just uh, subscribed to that where he's um, got an extract from where he's speaking with, I think it is Mike Farrell and Loretta Swit. There's a lot yeah, of great Jamie Farr shows up. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot yeah. of great podcasts, a lot of great information out there. One of the best podcasts yeah. you can listen to is one called Mash Matters that actually has Igor on it, Jeff Maxwell, mm -hmm. who was on the show. He comes on every two weeks. They have a new episode and they'll talk about all the, you know, remembrance. They'll have cast members. They had Gary Berghoff on. They had the late uh, Kelly Nac McNamara. Nac I think I said her name wrong. Yeah. Who played Nurse Kelly? She passed away of cancer just last year. And uh, yeah, he's got, they had Loretta Swick come on. They had Mike Farrell come on. Alan Alda was just on it. So yeah. that's a great podcast. And then there's another one called uh, MASHcast. There's a lot of MASH. Yeah. Uh, podcast that i think about it so yeah it's still well, alive hopefully if if you hadn't uh been a fan of mash you watch our show and you may be um inspired to uh listen to some of those or w watch some of those episodes um i'd certainly recommend it it is a very great it's a very great hang on <coughs> it's a very good show and uh you can really um get yeah put put your mask on mitch i'm starting to cough up um not hopefully not blood um hey Mitch, yes. If you want to subscribe to Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure, what do you do again? You just simply cl <laughs> click on that button. I'm steaming up. You click on that button uh, down there to subscribe, and you'll be notified. And hit the like button too if you just say, "Hey, look at those yep. two guys." And Thanks don't for forget to uh, put down your comments. What's your favorite Mash episode? Do you have a favorite character, or is there a topic that you want us to talk about? We always are happy for your suggestions. Uh, we've got some really good um, episodes in the pipeline. What do you What do you got there, Mitch? I was just gonna drink some more now that the show's over with. So that's all right. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, I, well, hopefully, I won't uh, choke the chicken. If you know what I mean, I will uh, talk to you uh, next episode. This is Ed Dollister. Look, there's a hint for a future episode. It's oh, my Blade Runner booze. That'll be and good. This, is, this has been Mitchell A. S. Halleck. That's right. Mash to his friends, and we'll see you uh, next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.